So uh, this is part two of uh, thrusting and thrusting safely. In the first half we looked at uh, what we wear on our bodies to protect ourselves from uh, stray points. Um, but whatever you wear, there are always going to be bits that are unarmoured. Okay? So the accident that we had fairly recently involved somebody presenting an open palm to a, uh, a point and you know, there's nothing there but a bit of leather no matter what you're wearing on your body. So the palm and other parts of the body are always going to be vulnerable. And so as well as protecting ourselves, we've also got to look at how we tip our weapons to make them as safe as possible. So what I'm going to do is uh, thrust at um, something with a variety of tips and see what sort of damage they do. Um, I must admit to a bit of prior experimentation on this and I have discovered that if you put a rock melon in a pillowcase or a sack and stab at it, you get pretty close to the same level as damage that you get on a human body if you stab a sword at a lightly padded part. Um, so let's have a look at the different tips and see what happens. So today I will be assisted by my lovely assistant Ryan, who will be holding the target for me to thrust at. And we're going to kind of work in reverse order. We're going to start with a rubber tipped long sword. So if you'd like to stand there. And that produced absolutely no damage, as expected. So the next sort of level of protection down is a leather strip, okay? Just a, a round bit of leather taped over the end of the longsword like that. So let's have a go and see how much damage that can do. Uh, there is a tiny, tiny little abrasion on the skin of the melon there, but really nothing. The next level down is of course the roll tip, which are, are very popular these days. So let's see how effective this prevents injury. That also caused a tiny little abrasion on the skin of the melon, but again, fairly effective. However, I'm going to do that thrust again slightly differently. Ah! Now, if you will look there, you can see that is actually a nasty indentation. That has broken the skin of the melon and caused quite a nasty wound. Now, that is because... While roll tips are nice and safe when they strike thusly, flat to the surface of whatever you're hitting, they do have these sharp little corners. And if you're delivering a descending thrust in particular, it's very easy to strike with the corner of the tip, like so. And as you can see in that case, that actually caused a really quite a nasty little abrasion on the melon. Let's go to the blob tip, okay? Also becoming very popular. So just a sort of spatulated fat end on the end of the sword. Ooh, yeah. that doesn't look pleasant. She's bleeding through the, the sack this time. Now that broke the skin of the melon and has caused a reasonably deep wound into it. Now, a couple of months ago, that exact sword produced almost that exact wound in my forearm. Um, that when it managed to miss the hard plates of the van brace and get through and just hit the bit that was uh, uh, only padded. Um, and that's almost exactly what it looked like. It was a neat little square puncture, it broke the skin, it caused blood, hardly life threatening, but very unpleasant. And uh, the melon there produced almost exactly the same wound. What about an untipped longsword blunt? So this is the sort of thing that reenactors would consider perfectly safe with a nice round end. Uh, and honestly, we've been using 
things like this for about two decades, but they do have the, the potential for injury. Now that just went straight through. It did not quite break the skin of the sack. But as you can see, that pour caused a quite deep gash just straight into the melon there. Um, and uh, that is almost exactly the same injury that one of our um, members got in his hand. Okay, so he accidentally parried a thrust with his palm, which is obviously unarmored. There's nothing you can do about that. And that was the result. And finally, for completeness, a sharp. Don't move, Ryan. And obviously, that just went in four inches without any effort at all. That's surprisingly, surprising how simple, like how easily the blunts went through. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You weren't, you weren't lunging, you weren't no. any weight behind it. It was just a very controlled, very... No one spars like that. Nobody spars at that matrix speed, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and how simply it went through. Yes. If you had have gone like... like... Yeah. Well, let's, let's, do, let's, do a, <laughs> let's do a nasty thrust just to finish off. Alright. The... So, I'll do something with the... Do something with something that's considered a blunt. Like that one, or...? Yeah, try, try the roll tip, but do... Okay, so but I'll do something that people actually do in sparring. Yeah. Alright? Oh. oh, look at that. So there you are, my higher speed sparring simulated thrust. Uh, cut through the cotton, straight into the melon, and the roll tip actually tore a great big chunk out. I don't know if you saw that, but melon blood splurted everywhere when I, when I hit that. Um, and again, that's because I caught it on the corner of that roll tip rather than flat on. So as you can see, different tips certainly have different potential for injury. Okay, Now that's not to say that um, every sword must be rubber blunted, um, even though that's obviously by far the safest thing to do. Um, but is a, man a matter of uh, managing risk, okay? So I've been thrusting and being thrust at uh, with untipped steel blunts for decades and probably will continue to do so. But we do need to at least be aware of what the risks are so that we can manage um, those risks. Um, now, when I first got my Dinelli broadsword uh, prototype, um, it came with a kind of a spatula blob tip like that. And Jake from Canada actually asked me at the time what I thought of that as a design feature. Well, as you can see from this, I don't think that the blob tips, any more than the roll tips, really are by themselves uh, completely safe. Um, but both design features do have uh, this in their advantage. Um, when you put a rubber blunt on the sword, uh, every time you slam the sword into something like a target, the steel inside the sword does cut into the rubber and if you've got just a normal rounded tip um, that will chew through the rubber of the steel of the rubber blunt and it will require replacing every now and again okay every few months to you know once a year or so kind of depending um, the good thing about the roll tips and the blob tips is of course they spread that impact and so this is going to cut through a rubber blunt much less often um, than with a just simply a round tip. So the blob tips are certainly worth putting on as are the roll tips. They're just in and of themselves not completely safe. So if you're doing a lot of very hard thrusting as well as armoring yourself, you should probably look at tipping your swords with either rubber or some sort of folded leather loop. Um, so that's basically all I've got to say on that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it.